Today, folks, puff, puff, pass, because MJ stocks are flying freaking high today. We're gonna talk about three MJ stocks and what is the news driving this potential pump and dump, or is this the start of a new trend, a turnaround story for the entire green space? We're gonna talk about interest rates, the news that's gonna be driving the market this month and what to anticipate. We'll talk a little bit about inflation data, CPI. We'll get into the housing market a bit and some of the commodities with oil. That is a conversation you'd appreciate as I wholesomely update you on the markets here. Consider hitting that like button, but let's get into this with first and foremost, the MJ markets here. Now, I know this is going to be primarily US focused. I was so blessed down memory lane when I saw this because of the first stock I ever bought in my entire investing career. I was like 23 years old, 24, and I was buying Canopy Growth Corp just before Canada mm, rang that bell of legalization, taking me to the freaking moon, taking all that profit, thank God, because it has, it has been abysmal up till this very moment. So this is kind of nostalgic to take a look here, but this is all fixated on the US this time around. And as many of you know, there's maybe one third of the entire US states that have full legalization, whereas a lot of them are, are CBD legal only. A lot of them are medical like Florida. But what happened as of recent is the US Department of Health and Human uh, Services made a recommendation to the US Drug Enforcement Administration that MJ be moved from a Schedule One controlled substance to a Schedule Three controlled substance under the Federal Controlled Substance Act. Well, what does that mean? It means that they take that consideration and they move it into a lesser, you know, criminal thing to do all of a sudden a lot of these states will be more lenient they'll obviously take it into legalization and it's weird that in 2023 after canada fully legalized it the states are still having issues getting to this point it's an inevitability but my god is there a bunch of old people that are just really against it it's just crazy how long this has been going on for but stocks are flying in that news the ceo of verano uh, he was on CNBC touting that because they have a foothold in Florida, that this could actually drive an extra hundred million dollars in revenue. But damn it, the stock's up pretty dramatically, 20% today over the last week, up 72%. Obviously, it, it's a blimp on the radar if you zoom all the way out, but this could really be a bottoming. I mean, there's the ETF you could play with advisor shares, pure MJ ETF. This one's up 42% this week if you want to play the sector and hope this isn't just a short term uh, blimp and you know maybe uh, people in Wall Street bets pick it up. I know Till. Uh, till Tilray was trending in there, and we'll talk about Tilray. I actually want to do a comparable to once was the biggest MJ stock being Canopy Growth Corp versus Tilray, because this one's up 72%, which is really nice seeing it get back up to a dollar, considering, you know, from that, that uh, initial top back in 2019, I mean, we're trading down 98%. But again, this is where the discounted opportunities come into play if you think there's further potential with this news coming into the US. However, I don't like Canopy here. I think it's it's just abysmal. I mean, they got 2.1 billion in assets uh, against basically 1.3 billion in liabilities. So about six, 700 million uh, if you minus out the liabilities from the assets. And that's sitting right around their market cap right now. Whereas I think the real value is in Tilray. This one trades for around a billion dollars. It's become a much bigger brand uh, and has actually been uh, a little bit better than Canopy at this point. And again, you don't even notice the, the hype if you zoom all the way out. But in the last five days, up 33 percent now Tilray uh, has actually acquired some of the uh, the brewing companies I think they're getting into beer or some alcohol which has diversified them a bit make them a little bit safer with 4.3 billion dollars in assets against 432 million current liabilities but only just under a billion in total liabilities I mean that means they have three billion dollars in underlying assets which is way way beyond their current market cap which is kind of funny right so it looks like there's some opportunity there considering the revenues have also been going up over last year the last quarter they saw a pretty big bump of about 34 million on the 12 month trailing it's pretty much unchanged other than they cleaned up the uh, the expenses a little bit and we can see that their gross profit increased by 26 percent over the last 12 months which is pretty good to see so i don't know what's going to happen it really depends on who has a good play in the u.s and i i think at the end of the day uh, there'll be a lot of risk depending on the competitive landscape like there was in canada but hey some potential opportunity now let's talk about what's going on with interest rates now canada and the US are pretty much playing the same game here. And I have a high expectation that once inflation gets back to its nominal rate, obviously they'll start cutting rates back down to probably the level of inflation between two and 3%. But right now inflation is sticky. There's gonna be no conversation of cutting rates. We need to get at least, I think, two, two consecutive quarters of basically nominal inflation, and then they'll start cutting rates. But right now, inflation has been sticky at around 3%. We can see that in the Canada in Canada and the U.S., which is funny how both of these, again, uh, our, our economies uh, trade in tandem here. But the thing is, is this is a self-inflicted wound. All of the you know, current inflation data is primarily coming from housing. And housing right now 
in the U.S. is starting to go back up. In Canada, it's been relatively flatlining, and that's just because there's no inventory. Nobody wants to renew their mortgages. Nobody wants to sell their house and upsize or downsize. They all just want to hold, sit tight, and try and get through this wave. New people are having a hard time getting in. But the fact of the matter is, is, in, is those mortgages renew, which I think most renew by 2025. Either way, that's what's starting to happen. We're seeing the renewals come in, people getting new uh, real estate, and they're paying a lot more for that mortgage, which means if you're a renter or sorry, a landlord and you have renters, tenants, you're going to raise the the monthly cost because not only the demand, especially here in Canada, but the fact you've got to cover these insane uh, interest rates to make a profit. So taking a look at the shelter cost here, we're seeing that, right? So in the U.S. with shelter, uh, it was one of the highest contributing factors to inflation, which is up 0.4%. And on the trailing 12 month, up 7.7% being one of the leading uh, indicators toward inflation, uh, which is kind of insane. I mean, you take a look at Canada here, same sort of deal. Uh, if we just take a look at shelter, it's up there with basically food. On the trailing 12 month, it's 5.1%, only next to food that's up 7.8%. Canada is getting inflicted a little bit harder because gasoline. Our gasoline prices were also a large contributing factor on the month over month. It was up 0.9%, primarily driven by carbon tax that came into play uh, over the summer. Also on top of that right now, oil prices are continuing to go up. If you want to know what's driving the oil prices as well, it kind of just comes down to uh, political you know, political um, intervention here, because if you might recall, Biden uh, basically withdrew 180 million barrels from the strategic reserve starting in March of 2022 to help ease inflation. And that brought the stockpile to its lowest level since 1980. And now they're starting to restockpile as of basically the summer. So month over month, they've been releasing how many millions of barrels they're adding to the stockpile, uh, which is putting pressure on some of the oil prices, which again is leading to higher cost of the gas tank for you and me. But that's kind of where the markets currently sit. And I'm very intrigued to see when the Federal Reserve comes into play, which in Canada, I think is next week. And the Federal Reserve, I think in the US is on the 19th and the 20th of this month. So that's going to be a huge uh, dictating factor to what the market is going to do. Do you think they're going to pause? Do you think they're going to raise? Are you interested in the MJ markets here as well? This could be a fascinating start to a new trend, maybe a bottoming, or who knows, maybe it's just a short-term speculative play that Wall Street Bets is starting to pick up. But let me know what you think in that comment section below.